Hi everyone. I think that a simulation of a raindrop trickling down a window is a very nice effect, and if there are more of them, they can be both highly useful and visually striking in games. So let's explore how this shader works from a programming perspective. Basically, the shader uses light refraction simulation, similar to what we implemented for the magnifying glass in one of the previous videos. This time, however, we are approaching it a bit differently. Instead of one large magnification, we'll create numerous small ones and modify them over time. So, as usual, I'll create a new 2D scene in Godot 4 and add an image to it, one that I've often used in previous tutorials, which is a screenshot from our game Whispers of Prague. Let's do it. So, right clicking, create a new scene, call it, uh, I don't know, rainy. Okay. And here is the image. I'll drag it to the scene so the uh, sprite to the node was automatically created and in the inspector I will just reset the center and reset the transform position to zero zero very well and of course let's not forget about the material down here we'll create a new shader material click uh, new shader let's call it rain gd shader canvas item type and I'll put it to the shaders folder and create and click and to open it in the editor let's expand it a little bit okay and of course let's delete everything we don't need vertex and light here we go great okay so let's start with the uniform parameters of which we'll need four this time to achieve the most irregular distribution of droplet we'll use a noise texture as the first parameter. I'll put it here. Uniform, uh, uniform, sampler 2D, noise text, and I'll give it repeat enable. Because as we know from previous videos, um, the texture should be applied on the whole a whole background but it is usually a square one so it's necessary to make it repeatable across the whole canvas to uh, achieve the right effect okay the second parameter will define the overall animation speed while the third and fourth will define the grid in the horizontal and vertical directions let's add them uniform load speed with a hint range and the initial value would be one i'll set the hint range from zero to four with a step point zero one okay and the grid so uniform float grid x hint range and the initial value would be 10 with a range from 1 to let's say 20 and the step would be of course 1 and let's do a similar thing for the y direction uniform float grid y and range and the initial value is 5 this time and again from 1 to this time 10 would be sufficient and the step is again one okay why a grid each droplet will belong to a specific row and column when aware will then apply calculations for dripping light refraction and other necessary effects the noise texture forms the basis for the individual layers of droplets however 
To add irregularities in their size and shape, we'll use our familiar function that generates pseudo-random float numbers. Let's insert it directly into the code. So it would be here float hash one one float n and simply returns rect of sine n multiplied by some big number this one or five three one two three okay as i said this is the standard uh, pseudo random function that we've been using in our previous videos as well so i mentioned layers right the entire effect is composed of several layers of droplets with varying size and falling speed to distract from a certain regularity that cannot be completely eliminated. So we'll prepare a function called drop layer. Two parameters will suffice, the UV coordinates of the current pixel and the time needed for proper animation. I'll put it here after the hash function. Okay, uh, vec2, drop layer with parameters I mentioned, UV coordinates and the time value. Okay, and let's just prepare the skeleton. Vec2, <coughs> grid, would be vec2, grid x and grid y. And let's return for now just a zero vector. Okay, and before we dive into its implementation, let's write the fragment function, which will include the usual elements, a minus sign for the correct droplet direction, aspect ratio adjustment for the proper shape, and finally, the use of the result from the drop layer function to offset the UV coordinates, creating the desired droplet effect with light refraction. Let's do it here. So first, vec2 UV is negative UV. If we don't do that, the drops would be uh, <coughs> not falling down, but going up. So we want to fix the direction. And now vec2 resolution is one divided by texture pixel size. This time we are working with a background image, so we don't need to specify a resolution as a shader parameter. We can easily calculate it from the internal variable texture pixel size. And calculate a calculation of the aspect ratio, UV X is multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution y okay now the time float time would be the time multiplied by speed so we can control the speed uh, from the shader parameters uniform parameters and vec2 drops something to display is the result of the drop layer function applied to UV coordinates and the time value. And finally, let's assign the color would be a texture from our texture, but it would be shifted by the result of the drop function. So it's this drops. Okay, so how do we proceed? Let's return to the drop layer function here and first calculate the basic coordinates of individual droplets using the current grid settings and the fract function to constrain them to the interval from 0 to 1. Okay, let's call it uh, drop uv. Is it no? Back to, of course. Drop UV would be, as I mentioned, the fract function applied on UV coordinates multiplied by the grid vector. Okay, now using the obtained values, we'll get something like the dimensions of the droplet, which we'll adjust later. 
let's add this line vec2 drop size would be drop uv divided by grid okay and we need a basic circular shape using the length function for which the smooth step function is very suitable with sufficiently small boundary values so that the resulting droplet roughly matches the desired size one more line here float drop shape <coughs> would be, as I mentioned, a smooth step uh, with boundaries 0 0.03 and 0 0.02. And the value would be length of the drop size. OK. And we have the first result, which we can return for use in the fragment function. Let's rewrite the last line of the drop layer function, which is this one. Instead of returning a zero vector, we will return this drop size. Eh. Drop size, I mean, multiplied by drop shape. I mean the drop shape, of course, this one, that was a typo, sorry about that. So we can see something like quarter circle arcs, can't we? Let me just enlarge that. And what I mean is this one, this one, this one. I hope it's visible. Let's make it even larger. All right. Um, the issue is, of course, that we want full circles, not just quarter circles. And it's caused by the interval from 0 to 1, which will now convert to negative 1 to 1. So let's insert one more line after uh, this one. Okay, drop UV would be modified and it's 2 times drop UV minus 1. Let's wait for it. Okay, it disappeared, but it's in another, another place right here. Can you see it? Full circles. That's much better. Okay, and I think it's time to use the noise texture since, as usual, it's a grayscale image. We only need one of the RGB components. So first, let's insert this line after the VEC2 grid definition. Here. Float to noise would be texture of the noise text and UV coordinates. And to get float, let's take just a red component. And we'll modify the line which follows that, defines the drop UV. So instead of just fract of UV times grid, we will add the noise texture, value from the noise texture, plus vec2 noise times 0.5, yeah. and noise times 0.1. To give it some more variability. Nothing happened, of course, because we haven't created the noise texture yet. We'll do it now, and I think that a standard noise texture 2D with fast noise light will be sufficient without any additional parameters. So let's find it in the shader parameters right here. I'll click it, new noise texture 2D, click again, and the noise set to fast noise light. Okay, let's enlarge the result. And yeah, we can see that something like uh, deformed droplets appeared. Once we animate them shortly, their shape will change even as they trickle down. We'll add a variable fool, which will control the mention dripping effect, and we'll use it. Uh, we'll use the hash one one function. This one. Uh, this time applied to the floor function, which serves as something like the ID of a specific cell in our grid. Uh, after some experimentation, I finally settled on the following calculation, which gave the best result. I'll edit here just after the noise definition. So float fall would be uh, hash11 applied on uh, 11. Just two ones, 
floor of UV times grid and we take the x coordinate plus one and something is not correct here let's wait oh, yeah, yeah sure the brackets belongs here and multiply the result by 0.1 okay something changed again and finally we'll add the movement of the droplets moving downward uh, which we'll do right after this line so uvy should be increased by the fall variable multiplied by time let's wait yeah can you see it how it's dripping down i think it looks cool even enlarged and if i get back to the original resolution we can see something very similar to the effect i've been showing at the beginning of the video so for now we have uh, one layer where the repetition of droplets in individual clumps is somewhat visible especially if i just zoom out and we can observe them okay so we'll improve the effect by adding two more layers each with smaller droplet that have different speeds and light refraction effects something like this let's scroll down to the fragment function and here drop layer definition and let's add two more so i think i can just copy that and it's not equals but increased by this one now we have to uh, exactly same uh, layer so let's change something uv would be multiplied by two and time let's multiply by 1.5 so here we change the scale of the droplets of this layer here we modify the falling speed and let's just give it one more modification multiply everything by 0.5 okay this is the second layer and the third one I will simply copy paste this time uh, this line and change it to uh, multiplying by four and multiplying the time by let's say two and multiply everything by 0.25 okay i think we are done let's enlarge the result and we can see the, uh, the layers the biggest one is the, this one the first one then the second one and the third one both all of them form a very nice rainy effect and of course uh, i think we can do some experiments with uh, with the parameters for example let's increase the total speed now it's falling pretty fast or make it put it to the full stop or just make it very slow and increase the number of droplets in both directions this is very nice okay i'll reset everything to the original values thank you so much for watching i described this effect along with many others in the second volume of my book about shaders so if you'd like to support this channel you can purchase it via the link in the description of this video of course, I'd also be grateful for every like or subscribe. In any case, take care, best luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.